What the f has gotten in to the Sea of Thieves developers? I doubt Sea of Thieves is going to run smoothly enough to make this work. I love new tools, I love new strategies. Oh my god, you are singing to my heart song right now, Sea of Thieves. You're doing it for me. Come on, man, let's go. <laughs> Sea of Thieves 2024 preview event. I've got my homies blowing up the phone all day. Those pop make reaction content to this video. So let's see what all the hype's about. Welcome to the Sea of Thieves 2024 preview event, where we're gonna give you your first look, first look at some of the exciting features coming to Sea of Thieves this year. We are going to share information around what's coming in seasons 12 and 13, as well as even further into the future, with a sneak peek behind the curtain on season 14. So grab a grog and get ready for adventure. As All right, well, right out the gate, holy shit. Did I see that right? Was that a harpoon, harpoon gun, sniper rifle, grappling hook? 14. So grab a grog. Okay, all right, well, that's dope. <laughs> um, hopefully, it's not just a a tall tale like the uh, like the, the the zip lines were. And we're not we're not going to speculate too far into it. But if if that is a thing that they're adding to the sniper rifle, um, hopefully in place of one of your two weapons that you can take, that's going to make boarding crazy. It's crazy. All right, let's keep going. You can get ready for adventure as we reveal some of the incredible bounty of features headed to Sea of Thieves in 2024. Sea of Thieves is a pirate sandbox adventure game where players create those stories together. And in the world of Sea of Thieves, there are tools and items that may seem simple on the surface, but when they're in the hands of real players who are playing in their own way and bringing their creativity, it really showcases that the sandbox is more than the sum of its parts as it creates these memorable stories. This year, in 2024, Air Focus is on giving you more tools, more possibilities, and with that freedom out on the waves, give you the possibility to have these amazing moments and really changing up the core moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of the sandbox. The kind of main aims for season 12 are about mixing up the meta and how players enjoy all of the different aspects of Sea of Thieves. So as part of season 12, we're gonna be adding two new weapons and three new tools for players to use. An area we haven't really delved into since launch is adding new weapons to the game. Oh, new weapons yeah. that give you new tactical <laughs> choices and strategies out there on your adventures. So in season 12, we're going to be adding the double barrel pistol and throwing knives. The Shit. Wait, hang on a second, hang on a second. <laughs> no, dude, no way. Oh my god, okay. Ventures. So in season 12, we're going to be adding the double barrel pistol and throwing knives. The double barrel. You boy, you dude, ain't gonna give me dang old shot by shot, boy, I tell you. <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. Oh, Cletus the Pirates, he's gonna be. <laughs> you gonna get a twofer. <laughs> Barrel flintlock is a new type of pistol weapon where you can fire two shots individually before you need to reload, or you can charge them together and release them at once for a more powerful shot. And that is exactly how it works in real life. That is dope. Oh my god, dude. We wanted to kind of create this new weapon arc. New blunderbuss? Is this going to be... Yeah, that's got to be a one-shot kill, right? Because it's 50% damage per pistol shot. Well, I don't know. That's too much speculation. But holy shit, if this is like a new blunderbuss, maybe it doesn't have knockback. Maybe that's what the blunderbuss is still going to have, the, the powerful aspect of the knockback. We'll, we'll just see. Not, we're trying not to speculate too much, but holy shit. <laughs> a type that's a bit shorter range, but a faster fire rate, but perhaps not as powerful or damaging as, as the flintlock pistol but then it has those kind of blunderbuss-like qualities as well, where you can do the charge shot to release two pellets at the same time. Mm. Accompanying that double barrel flintlock with another weapon like the cutlass, for example, for a finishing blow can lead to a fast time to kill for a player to be able to quickly take down a target. Season 12 also brings in the- So it looked like, <clears throat> and, and you can't really speculate too much, but it, it looked like it was two pistol shots and then one sword swipe. Um, so, you know, math or whatever, but isn't, uh, I think the sword swipes are 20, it's either 20 or 25% damage. So that would put it at 
What, 80 divided by 2, so it's 40. It's 40% damage per pistol shot, possibly, maybe. <laughs> oh man, I'm ready, let's go. Season 12 also brings in the throwing knives as a weapon. Now these can be used as a melee item. They have a light and a heavy melee action, but they can also be thrown and used at range as well. You can use it to kind of like stab players with like a quick attack, but that doesn't do much damage. Or you can charge it to like pull it into this kind of more dangerous stabbing motion. And uh, that'll slow the player's movement down and give this like really high damage attack for if you like sneak up behind players. And then finally, it has the ability to kind of flip the knife over, catch it, and then throw it at distance against players, which again, kind of feels like a trick shot and it'll do a lot of damage as well. When you throw a throwing knife, and if you miss, you can actually go in the world and it'll stick into any of the geometry and you can just pull it out and then it'll replenish your ammo. So I think personally for me, this is really good because sometimes I miss, as I'm sure some of us do. Uh, so you can then just go ahead and pick it up again. So you get these wonderful moments where a pirate might throw a knife at you, but then you can retrieve that knife and throw it back to them. So it'll really mix up the kind of combat scenarios you can expect out in the world and when boarding other ships. There are three new tools in... All right, first off, bro, that looks brutal, okay? The <laughs> you go on at it, dude, like freaking... Uh, OJ, <laughs> you know, like this brings me back. This brings me back to the style of gameplay that I like to do personally. I've never been super great with guns. Like it's not been ever been my forte. The melee aspect of games calls to me more. So Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I think is what it was. They had a game game mode called Sticks and Stones. I reference it a lot. It was one of the greatest times in Call of Duty history for me. Uh, throwing tomahawk, shooting ballistic knives. And then I would take that play style into the regular game and uh hope for you know cqb matches uh close quarters matches where i could uh you know use the terrain to make up for my lack of range man oh god that's so exciting and the fact that you can the tit for tat you can do where you can pick up someone else's throwing knife like i think that's a great that is a great mechanic however I doubt Sea of Thieves is going to run smoothly enough to make this work. Um, I'm trying not to be negative here, but let's just be honest. You know, Sea of Thieves has not got a super great track record with uh, gameplay running smoothly, especially in the beginning. So hopefully after a period of time of patching, um, there's going to definitely be bugs. Expect bugs with the throwing knife, 100%. 100%. There are three new tools in season 12, the wind caller, the scatter shot, and the bone caller. With the scatter shot, the way that it's different to a standard cannonball is it's a collection of four cannonballs, but they're much smaller. They have a much shorter fall off range and a really widespread, allowing you to hit a target with multiple projectiles at the same time. And it does really small amounts of damage to the ship, just like a level one size hole. So like really quick for players to repair, but it can kind of overwhelm a crew quite quickly. Basically, if you get up close with the scatter shot and you can get a few onto your enemy, they're gonna have a lot of holes and they're gonna have a pretty bad time. What it will do is really eat up an opponent's resources. They'd need to use more wood to repair the many holes that the scatter shot puts into the hole. Let's talk about the scatter shot for a second. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm curious though, as to if it's going to increase the tier one to a tier two hole, the very next shot, like two, two scatter shots in a row, if they hit the same place twice, is it gonna go from tier one to tier two? Um, is it gonna interact kind of like a chain shot? Um, or is it only going to create tier one holes without being able to upgrade that damaged, um, <clears throat> the damage of that hole? <clears throat> so we'll just have to see. <clears throat> cool. I love new tools. I love new strategies. Can't, can't really say at this point whether or not it's going to be good or bad. You know, we'll just have to see. So the bone caller is an awesome new throwable that players can wield and they can throw that on the floor and when it smashes all these kind of bones come out and then skeletons spawn around the player in allegiance to them and they'll actually fight beside the player against enemy players and enemy AI. Now you might not be going straight for just a normal cannonball or a, or, or a chain shot, you might in fact go straight for the bone caller so you can have some skellies that are on your side on that ship sort of messing things up for that crew. You could use fire to fight fire so if somebody shoots a bone caller across the sea at your ship and they spawn in. If you have your own bone caller, you could throw that down on the deck 
and have your own skellies go and fight those uh, to take them out for you so that you don't have to. I mostly play solo and to be able to spawn literally anything that is friendly to my cause while I'm playing is a massive uh, positive. So I'm kind of looking forward to that and I'm sure that other players will find ways to make use of it as well. The win <clears throat> Ooh, mixed feelings. Um you know what? I'm, I'm, let's run with it, man. I'm, I'm ready for it to get a little crazy, a little uh, break the monotony of Sea of Thieves. The combat definitely needs some crazy shit going on. It seems a little magic-y uh, just to be a regular throwable. I wish it was, uh, maybe it'd be cool if it was behind like some sort of quest or like uh, you had to find these behind a world event or something. You know, I hope if it's just on in barrels at an outpost. Um, but I mean, you know, you got cursed cannonballs, so... Mm. It's tough to have insight on that one. Can they stack? If you shoot like five in a row, is it going to have five times the amount of skeletons or is it just going to have the one set of however many skeletons, was it like four skeletons that I think it spawned? Is the boat size going to have a max number of skeletons that spawn on it? Like, oh, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot that goes into that. Uh, mixed feelings, but what, you know, you know. <clears throat> let's, let's let's get low, let's get a, let's get crazy with it. I'm ready. The Windcaller is a new horn-shaped shell that players can blow into to summon the power yes. of the wind. So imagine the scenario yes. that you're heading fully into the wind and you're Thank either chasing you. someone or you're trying to get away Jesus from someone. Christ. Now you can use this tool to blow wind into your cells and go even beyond full billow in speed. Players can also use it to kind of knock players back off their ship or on land so they can kind of target a player, blow into the Windcaller and it will throw them back into the air. You can use it as a means of propulsion for yourself in the water, but also for uh, rowing boats. So you can either <laughs> use it while you're in the water swimming and you'll blast along like a really fast water boatman, or you can stand on a rowing boat and blast it out of the back like a, a speed boat, basically. You can put out fires and you can do it quickly. So you can just essentially walk mm. around your entire ship is caught on fire and just put out all the fires as you walk around. And they can even- I can already hear it now. Actually, uh, air is, is a fuel for the fire. So if the fire is big enough, it shouldn't be able to put the fires out. <laughs> I can hear them now. <laughs> I'm looking at you, Reddit and Twitter. <laughs> and they can even use it to like stop their fall damage. Like say you're falling a great distance and you use the wind caller below you, like cushion your fall so you like land safely as well. There is like a, a finite charge for how long the wind caller can last for. So you have to mm. use it wisely. Mm. Oh fucking P. I'm just gonna say that right now. That's OP and it's much needed for people people who like to run. Yep. So season 12 also introduces zip lines onto several of the islands around Sea of Thieves. So you may have seen these as they debuted in the Monkey Island Tall Tales, and they're a really fun and exhilarating way to traverse. So it's really cool to be able to bring those to the wider Sea of Thieves world. Hell yeah. So we've been looking across all the islands of the Sea of Thieves and looking at the most ideal places to kind of mix up the traversal opportunities uh, within all of the islands to add these zip lines across them. So we've added zip lines to like the outpost to get down to your ship quickly. We've added them to the skeleton forts that allow you to kind of zip line between two positions to kind of escape the skeletons or get close to them when they first spawn. Or just general kind of zip lines across the islands for like fast traversal and moving chests around the islands quickly. For Can I slowly climb up them while hanging underneath like you know, feet wrapped around the rope, hanging upside down, that would be amazing. Example on Ancient Spire Outpost now, you've got to clunk down some cliffs in order to get to your ship. Now you'd be able to just go and get on the zip line and go flying all the way down to the jetty next to your ship. So alongside adding completely brand new tools to the CAT sandbox, there's also the opportunity for us to go back and add completely brand new functionality to existing tools. So another cool new feature that we're adding for season 12 is the ability to balance on harpoon lines. So you can shoot that harpoon line at another ship or another island and then jump onto it and then like balance across. Depending on the <laughs> angle in which you fire the harpoon, it'll either be like too steep to climb up it, but if you're on the other end, you can actually jump on the harpoon line and like slide down it really quickly back to your ship. We're really confident this will lead to some really inventive player boarding tactics out there in the sandbox, as well as giving you new ways to traverse the islands. 
With all this that we're adding in season 12, it gives players more opportunities to create those stories as we're really enriching the sandbox of every session. So we're always really excited to add new tools and mechanics to Sea of Thieves, but we're always mindful that we want to make sure that the game's health is in a really good position as well, that the integrity of Sea of Thieves is there for our players. And since we're adding new weapons into Sea of Thieves, we're very mindful that we want to ensure that the hit registration in our game is as rock solid as it can be. And this is a, an ongoing thing for us as a development team. We're constantly putting time and effort into this area to try and make it as robust as possible. In the past, we've borrowed time from feature teams to address issues in the core experience, but it's always taken a back seat to the features that those teams are working on. In 2024, this is changing. We're securing a dedicated team to focus on the health of the game, bringing fixes and improvements to the things that matter most to our players as soon as they're ready as part of our regular monthly updates. This is gonna be a key focus for the team this year. We want your Sea of Thieves experience to be the best that it can be. Adding new loadout choices as part of upcoming seasons shows our commitment to making encounters between players a more dynamic and fun experience. But crucially, this all has to operate on a stable combat system. We know that there's still plenty of work to do here, but this remains a top priority for our team. March's update delivered Easy Anti-Cheat, an industry-leading anti-cheat solution designed... Okay, before we get into that, what the fuck has gotten in to the Sea of Thieves developers? Are they, like, what are they, are they, bro, what are they on? Give me two, give me two, because season 11, so strong. That, that is what the game should have always been, okay? I, maybe they just had some, I don't know, some epiphany, okay? And now they're releasing this like dog i don't i can i don't give a fuck if it's real realism or not on on the pirate level if it's a little magic -y, if it's a little quirky and fun dude this is dope however i will say i posted a video before when they were talking about i think it was like season nine or season ten where uh i feel like they were over promising and then under delivering and it no doubt feels like we've actually under delivered in this space right now under delivered under delivered under delivering and i just really i really hope that is not about to happen again because this is a lot this is a lot there's gonna be bugs hopefully they can get it to run smoothly god please let this be as amazing as i'm as i hope okay anti-cheat but this remains a top priority for our team. March's update delivered Easy Anti-Cheat, an industry-leading anti-cheat solution designed by Epic. This solution evolves over time, keeping up with cheat developers, blocking them at every turn. This is really, though, just the first step at improving the player experience here in Sea of Thieves. We want to focus this year on making Sea of Thieves play better than ever before, whether that be improving the performance of the game across the variety of hardware it runs on, ensuring that it's a safe place to play with a focus on cheating, but also ensuring that our hit registration is as reliable as possible in all of your adventures out there in the sandbox. Okay, the first step, dog, the, this... <laughs> You've taken a lot of steps before you got to anti-cheat, okay? I'm glad it's here, but holy shit, <laughs> okay? Thank God. <laughs> so Captain Flameheart has been a staple and important character of Sea of Thieves for many years, appearing in her novels and appearing in her many tall tales and expanded fiction. With season 13, this brings the return of Captain Flameheart to the Sea of Thieves. As Flameheart has been resurrected, so has his Burning Blade ship, and it's back in more monstrous and terrifying form than ever before. So we've reimagined it for season 13, and it looks incredible. It almost looks like an, a living entity itself. So traditionally, world events have been at set locations throughout the world. The Burning Blade is a little different. The Burning Blade is a ship, and they're Bro, we gotta go back and check out this dude's hair. It is fucking glorious, dog. <laughs> like, if you don't have 2 million uh, views on TikTok, I don't know what you're doing, dog. That hair will definitely put you there, bro. It almost looks like an, a living entity itself. So traditionally, world events have been at set locations throughout the world. I'm a little jealous, I'm not gonna lie. Is <laughs> Look at the man's hairline. Holy crap, dude. <laughs>
the world. The Burning Blade is a little different. The Burning Blade is a ship and therefore moves around the world. But the twist is, when you've defeated the ship, you have the option to board it and pledge yourself and your crew to Flameheart, enter into his service and become the crew of the Burning Blade. Yes! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Essentially becoming a player-created world event yourselves. So obviously we have to go in big with this one. At a base, it is larger and more formidable than any ship we've seen on the waves. This ship has 10 cannons. It has a statue room dedicated to Flameheart at the back. It has a balcony where Flameheart likes to take in the view every morning with his coffee. And most importantly, it's got a massive flamethrower at the front. Players will be able to pull a lever on their ship Fuck and fire yes. two massive balls of fire out the front of their ship, which is really interesting because we've never actually had an offensive weapon that's frontal facing before. So I think ah. this is going to create some really interesting dynamic naval combat situations. Let's go. So once you take over the Burning Blade, you are on this really powerful warship and you have a skeleton crew helping you as well. So even smaller crews have every chance of crewing the Burning Blade because the skeletons will come to your aid. So you could have skeletons repairing while you're on the cannons firing at enemies which is excellent. But it's not just about sailing around the world, which of course you can do. It's about completing orders in service of Captain Flameheart. So around the world, there'll be numerous skeleton camps. You'll notice the Reapers have been conducting excavations on the surface, and they've been dragging up all sorts of ancient artifacts and ancient secrets from below the surface. Do those ancient secrets include harpoons? And if they don't, why the fuck not? <laughs> <laughs> Our ancient secrets have brought us this wooden tower. <laughs> Feast your eyes on this rickety, unfinished wooden fence. <laughs> Give me harpoons. <laughs> Underground, there's basically a chamber with a prism that the players can control to draw out constellations on the ceiling in order to help the ritual come to completion and get that knowledge of the ancients. Each of these temples contains the secrets of the ancients, secrets that Flameheart wants above anything else. And as part of taking control of the ship, you'll be able to sail around the world, visit these ancient temples deep below these skeleton camps, engaging new puzzle gameplay, discover treasures, but what you're really after is the Orb of Secrets, a new treasure artifact that Flameheart wants. Collecting these secrets will add tribute to the Burning Blade ship. The more tribute that you collect, the more value will be aboard the Burning Blade. But you will lose the Burning Blade if it sinks or when you choose to go and cash that tribute into Flameheart. So it's really up to you how long you think you can hold on to it with that risk reward because everybody in the world is going to be coming for you. They're going to know you're in there and know you've got high value. So it really becomes this dynamic player created world event with players versus players in the sandbox. So even though you can visit these skeleton camps while in control of the Burning Blade, it's not only tightly wedded to that new gameplay, players can also visit them any time in their adventures. So should players visit these skeleton camps when they're not the crew of the Burning Blade, the skeletons won't be too happy that you've found a way inside these camps and you'll be engaging in a combat-focused encounter to discover its secrets. What's really exciting about season 13 is the interplay of the features and the way that they'll bring players together and combine to create new stories. And whether you're the crew of the Burning Blade who wants to protect it or everyone else who wants to take it down and steal that value, everything in season 13 will bring you together. Bro, I have said for so long that the Pirate Lord is way too chummy. He is a friendship bonding like like uh like og naruto everybody's a friend this this like cult it's it's reapers versus the world this feels so right and as somebody who is absolutely i'm completely and totally subscribed to the mindset of the reaper go out sink people not the running reapers we don't claim you guys just being menacing and just being a terror on the seas there's actually a place to call your own it actually feels legitimate there's an actual big bad evil guy out there on the seas 
and you can join his squad. This is what the Reapers should be. We should strike fear into the hearts of the other pirates. <laughs> Yar. <laughs>So towards the end of the year, we have season 14. And while it's very early for us to talk about, we wanted to share some of our thinking here because it is totally aligned with this vision for what 2024 can be, this laser focus on the sandbox and mechanics that add My to the ready. variety of stories Lay it on you can me, encounter Mike. in Sea of Lay Thieves. It on me, Mike. Internally, we're referring to season 14 as Pirates of Mischief. Sea of Thieves has always had this playful, mischievous and funny sense of humour. And with season 14, we're expanding on that. The two main areas that we're exploring are new ways to stealth and new ways to cause mischief in the world. So I think a real aspect of the Sea of Thieves experience that we haven't... Stealth? You said more sneak? You said more sneak? Oh my god, you are singing to my heart song right now, Sea of Thieves. You're doing it for me. Come on, man, let's go. I'm so ready. Dive too deep into previously is the idea of being a stealthy pirate. So when you think about stealth in Sea of Thieves and enhancing that, imagine being able to crouch and move around the world silently, or the ability to hang off the side of an enemy ship. Oh when God. we were having these initial conversations about season 14, the first thing I thought of was the cardboard boxes in Metal Gear Solid. Could we allow players to climb yes. into chests. Yes, you could. And if they choose, they can actually scuttle around with their little legs out <laughs> of the bottom. And also, if they choose to, you know, keep the ruse up, could other players come along and pick them up like a normal loot chest or treasure chest or whatever and take it onto their ship? So another cool. You got, okay. <laughs> You got okay. You've got to make it have a different sound. I think. I think that would be the only way to balance it. Every single box that you carry has a different sound. Every single box that you drop onto the ground has a different noise. And I think there needs to be a tell. There needs to be a tell, and it needs to be extremely subtle. Otherwise, I think this might go too op. I mean, for fuck's sake, look at what Hippo's done without that tool. Uh, you need to make sure that it is balanced. Um, <laughs> otherwise, people are going to be absolutely fucked. <laughs> the cool thing that we've been working on is is the blow dart, which is another new weapon that players can wield. The cool thing that we've been working on is is the blow dart, which is another new weapon that players can wield from the armory and use that to kind of sneak aboard enemy ships and fire kind of these custom darts into players that will do different effects. So imagine a blow dart that tracks whatever it sticks to, whether that's a ship, a chest, an item, a player. Ones that could potentially like lure skeletons to like a specific position so you can throw a firebomb in there or, you know, explode a gunpowder keg or darts that can trigger specific sound effects, which is quite evil and cunning where you could board an enemy ship and shoot the capstan and it sounds like it's dropping or shoot the ladders and it sounds like someone's climbing up them. And then thinking about some of the ways that we want to add more mischief to the world, one of these is the idea of traps. So much like the... All right, all right, all right. Magic blow guns where I got to stop you there. I don't Like I already don't like it when uh like if I get that fake noise my anchor drop, the the fake capstan noise, I already don't like that. And now people can do it intentionally plus with the bugginess of Sea of Thieves and what it is it, I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm saying I'm not, I'm not with that one. I don't like that. Blow darts could be so cool. Blow darts can be a thing. Fucking with how I identify threats in the game based off of noise, which is a huge portion of Sea of Thieves. Uh, learning to listen for people coming up out of the water onto the ship. Learning the way cannonballs hit different port parts of your ship and the different explosion would it would cracking sounds that they make i don't know but but you know i guess i don't know if i like that we'll, we'll just have to see when it gets there if it's you know balanced correctly but i don't know how it could be mm. 
Mm. Don't like it. Ways that we want to add more mischief to the world. One of these is the idea of traps. So much like the kind of blunder bombs or fire bombs, we've been thinking about them being this kind of throwable trap that players can kind of throw into the world. Think of it like a like a spring trap that players can place on the islands to trap skeletons on a bounty or on a fort, or they could place it at the top of their ladders to prevent players from boarding their ships and get caught in this trap. Along with these, we're also bringing a really exciting new tool, and it's the grapple gun, which is a dual purpose uh, rifle. So how this interacts with another player's ship is going to be extremely crucial as to whether or not this is going to be too OP. It allows you to tra traverse the environment much quicker because you're able to grapple yourself up to a ledge, for example but you can also harpoon items and other players in. So some of the new cool uses we've seen from the grapple gun in our early playtests are, you know, players firing themselves out of the cannon towards another ship to try and board them and perhaps overcooking it and then using the grapple gun to Dope. fire it at the deck and propel Dope. themselves down onto it. Or jumping off their ship to like an oncoming ship and then using the grapple gun to kind of grapple up and onto their ship so that they can board them and, and drop their anchor. So it makes the sniper noise. Yeah, okay. So you, going back to audio cues that tells you what's going on in the world and for those to be accurate, I think that is a very good addition or a very good component of the grappling gun. It's not super quiet. It doesn't sound like a harpoon. It sounds like a sniper rifle, at least in this footage. Carl, have a fight with them. To make sure that uh, the grapple gun is balanced, it does have ammunition. You'll have arrowheads, and these essentially break off when you successfully use the grapple gun, meaning you can't continuously keep grappling. There is a skill to using the gun successfully and accurately and efficiently. So when we and how many shots are you going to have? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. In the gun successfully and accurately and efficiently. So when we think about 2024, we really think about getting to the very heart of what makes Sea of Thieves great. That is your stories powered by that design philosophy of tools, not rules. Season 12, 13 and 14 are fully exploring that, giving you new options, new tools and fundamentally new possibilities that make this game unique and special. I think when you look at the year ahead for Sea of Thieves, our plans for season 12, season 13 and season 14, it's kind of making this shift away from these big kind of systemic changes to Sea of Thieves and returning back to the core of what makes Sea of Thieves so special, the heart of Sea of Thieves, about giving players new tools to create new stories out there in the world. We're ultimately shaking up the meta, giving players new tools to learn and master. And I can't wait to see what combinations players start settling on before we shake it back up again. While everything that you're seeing today is still work in progress and possibly subject to change in some ways, we will be giving more insights onto how these things are developing as we come closer to launch for each of them. With the richness of all these new seasons and of course PlayStation Pirates joining us as well, it is such an exciting year for Sea of Thieves in 2024. All right, so I'm here for it. 100%, 110%, I'm here for it. A couple of things got me worried, but it's too early. It's it's too early to make, you know, a decisive judgment on these changes. But so far, I think overall, this is dope. Let's, let's get a little crazy with it. Let's go. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, am I wrong? Am I right? Do you like the changes? What's going to be broken? What's not going to be broken? Hell yeah, 2024. See you, thieves. So until our paths cross again, happy sailing, and we'll see you on the seas. <laughs> <laughs>